Happy day four. Uh, I had a couple questions about, let's see. I got a question about vitamins and brands and when and if. Here's my, this is, uh, for the most part, I think vitamins are a um, waste of time and money. Unless your doctor says you are deficient in something, mm -hmm. then you should be taking what the doctor says you're deficient in. Otherwise, you're basically, the rate of absorption, the amount you can buy she actually needs, knowing what it needs, what it doesn't need, over the amount of money it takes to do that, it's, it's really not worth the dollars to do it. There is some value if you don't care about the dollars. Otherwise, there's nothing concrete that's saying it's that beneficial. No, but... But during winter time, right, I supplement vitamin D every day because there's not much sun. Other people may be deficient in certain vitamins or minerals. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd have to be going through blood testing to figure those things out. Right. So like, do um, those things. For a while, I was on a lot of antibiotics, and so I was taking a probiotic, but that's also like not, I mean, it's kind of a vitamin-ish. No. Anyway, yeah. well, yeah. you know, right. something. As a su now, so it's a supplement. Supplements are different than vitamins. Right. Now, different supplements contain different, I mean, protein is a supplement. That's great for you, right, to increase your protein intake. Um, otherwise, don't worry about it, just because the amount of value that's, that most supplements and vitamins have are such a small percentage compared to everything else. Sleep better, de-stress, work out consistently, drink water, eat a multiple range color of foods yeah, that's what I was gonna first, say. then think about those other things. Try to get like multiple colors of your vegetables and your fruit because that helps like with the different the vitamins, vitamins and, and nutrients that you're gonna yeah, get. Yeah, and the availability, the bioavailability and the nutrient, like the absorption is different with real foods. Yeah. Okay, now, next thing was asked was, um, 80 20 rule for snacking. This gets a little bit, a little bit gray area. This is the easiest way to think about snacking the 80 20 rule and just snacking in general. Stick to a protein only option. That's your best way to think about snacking. Okay. Yeah. So when you think about snacking, you want to think, um, you know, if it's a lull between 11 and I don't know. Uh, no, oh. like 11 and like 7, right? You have this big oh. eight-hour window and you need something in between because it's a long time. That's where you're going to think about a protein-only option. Like if you were thinking about putting something into a MyFitnessPal or reading the backside of it, there's like carbs are very minimal. Like carbs and fat are less than 5 grams. That's the protein option. Like um, hard-boiled egg. Turkey. Turkey. Um... Meat, any basically any meat source would be that. Mm -hmm. You have to be very careful with snacking on what appears to be a protein snack, but is actually a carbohydrate snack or fat snack. Peanut butter is a fat snack, not a protein. Almond butter is right between the middle between a carbohydrate and a protein. Mm -hmm. um, a uh, no flavored, like plain yogurt would is, also yeah. be okay because the carbs are gonna be like, Five pretty small yeah, yeah no fat right. if yeah. you get like the zero percent yeah and you get the non-flavored ones the non, yeah the plain because all the flavored ones have a ton of sugar which if you are doing that sprinkle in just like a little bit of like vanilla protein powder or like some cinnamon and flavor it up and it'll be good yep yep uh, another hack for yogurt if you are a yogurt person is um the flavor mixes from puddings so good or that's how you can hack the flavor inside um, yogurt. But asterisks get the sugar-free. Sugar-free sugar, Jello stuff. Sugar-free Jello yeah. packets, yeah. 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 Okay, um, and then we also talked about timing of food. Timing of food is so far down the list of importance compared to quality and quantity of food that it shouldn't be on your list to be really concerned about. The whole eat one meal, three meals, five meals, don't eat when you wake up, eat when you wake up, eat before you go to bed, None of that matters. It's such a small percentage to what happens. The only thing that makes a difference with that is that that is um, going to increase your consistency and quality. So if you always snack on M&Ms before you go to bed, then from telling yourself to stop eating at eight is one way of hacking the M&Ms. Right. But that's really, it's not the 8 p.m. part, it's the removing of the M&Ms part. It's just part. the M&Ms, right. Right, so don't worry about that. It's such a small thing that it's not that big of a deal. Um, now with timing with 
we had a question about timing for like carbohydrates. There's general rule of thumb. The least amount you do, the least amount of carbs. The more you do, the more amount of carbs. So if you have a no, if you have a day with zero movement, ideally a very low carb day. If you have a day with a lot of movement, medium to high carb day, right? And that would still be following along with the hand portion guide. That would just be like, well, I'm gonna have my cup full of carbohydrates with two to three of my meals because I moved or worked out today. Otherwise, I'm gonna try to resist as many carbs as possible because I didn't move that much. So that would be there. Uh, when it comes to timing your vegetables, just get your servings in when you can, okay? I know people, we have a big salad at lunch and we have two servings with our dinner. Yep. And that's just how it is because vegetables in the morning just don't really align with our day. Um, that's okay, right? Not a big deal. Uh, however, if you are someone who overeats in the morning, allowing yourself to put vegetables in your morning will help you with volume. with volume of food and portion control. Okay? Cool. Oh, I had another one. 80-20 um, rule with sugar in your coffee. Mm. This gets tough. I am not opposed to people putting things in their coffee, but that comes back to trying to keep your meals protein based. If you're gonna have a small amount of sugar in your coffee and you're having protein source with your breakfast and coffee, not a big deal. If you're waking up and you're only having sh a sugar <laughs> coffee and that's okay. it, you're just having caffeine carbs, you're not having any protein or fat, I would try to stay away from that. But I also wouldn't consider that your 20%. I would, as long as you're keeping with a, an appropriate amount of like, um, like serving of like, it, yeah, like, like, a, like, a, like a measurement of it. Like yes. you're not like right, just right, dumping. Right. right. And ideally you want to stay under like, I would try to stay under five to 10 grams of sugar in a, in a serving size of anything, just in general rule. So if you can stay under that with your coffee, not a big deal, because again, that's such a small thing over the large run. When we really know the things that are uh, like, the things that are holding us back on most of our nutrition is the excessive snacking, the meals that are too big, the uh, frequency of the meals that are too big, and the meals that have too much calories in them because they're a non-optimal meal. That's usually where, that's what's holding us back on progress, not whether or not you had cream in your coffee. That's small compared to everything cool? cool i think that's about it um we had another question about social situations with non-optimal food optimal food 20 percent eating good right when you're out somewhere else we're gonna go live on danielle's like personal page in a couple hours to talk about that because we think it's a really great topic that a lot of people could benefit from yeah. so go follow danielle Tune in later on tonight, and we're gonna talk about how to handle those social situations with optimal non optimal foods. Hey, day four, you guys are doing fantastic. We've already heard great results from multiple people, four pounds, seven pounds, right? Crazy. Um, so keep going, right? One, One more day. day. One day. You can do you it. This. You're fine. Friday, we'll talk about stuff tomorrow. Talk about how, if you haven't already seen the messages, we'll talk about our next program which will layer a bunch of stuff this information on top of what we're doing for now um, and you can make some really really great progress with your awesome. goals and your education of the process Habits for life okay. see you guys bye